causes pain. It causes a depth within our soul that uh, we don't know how to repair. And in our family counseling, one of the things that we talk about is relationships and the scars that takes place. See, we make mistakes in all relationships. We mess them all up. We mess up our friendships and we mess up our marriages and you know, whether it's during our marriage or our parenting or church relationships or our neighbors or our job or at school, we mess relationships up. Somebody give me an amen. We fight, we argue, and I'm not here to tell you that you're not going to have an argument. I am going to talk to you about how to have that argument. In marriage counseling, they call that fighting fair. Anybody know how to fight fair? And most times we don't. The louder you get, the, 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 you think that they're going to hear you. And sometimes the louder you get, the less they hear you. Or you sit sour and soak and you don't even talk to anybody and you expect to get your way because you don't talk to them. Good solid relationships are ones that we've never sinned against each other. And that never takes place. Because anytime that we have anger and wrath, we have sin. Good relationships come from the handle is how we handle our failures. How do we deal with one another when they sin against us? Strong marriages, good parent-child relationships, happy church families, productive work environments are all built on the people properly handling one another's mess-ups. It's not that somebody will not mess up. It's how do we handle that mess-up. So I want you to start thinking today about a relationship that you have. A relationship that maybe went the wrong way. A relationship that was scarred and marred. Maybe it was because of anger or maybe it was because of sin. And those relationships that you've hurt and you think about 2017 and those relationships. Can we heal in those relationships? I want to give you the end of the year sermon. That I believe that if we take this sermon at the end of 2017 and apply this sermon into 2018. Into fixing marred relationships. We are emotional relational beings. And if we can start fixing some of our relationships, what happens to our soul, it brings joy. It brings peace and contentment. When somebody has a broken relationship and somebody's struggling with a relationship, uh, you stay up all night and, you, and you're worried about things. You're worried whether they're going to like you or whether it's going to work out and you have no idea what's taking place. And how we ha handle those relationships are so very important. Whether it's a teenager or whether it's a young adult, whether it's a married adult, it makes no difference because we all have those relationships that we have to deal with. Now, we're going to apply this in many different areas. We're going to apply it in students. We're going to apply it in marriages. We're going to apply it at church. We're going to apply it at the job because everybody goofs up. Everybody has problems within their life and within their marriages, within their school, and within their job. We have to deal with people. Life would be great if we didn't have to deal with people, right? But we all deal with people. And as, a, as, as somebody that uh, talks to people all day about counseling, about relationships, it is the one thing that hinders true happiness is when we do not handle our relationships well. So I want to give you three simple points. Relationships are repaired through kindness. Relationships are repaired through kindness. If you experience a rift in your relationships, friendships, or the church, or the job, in your neighborhood, kindness is the one greatest tool available to restore in your relationship. So it's a prized place, even for making a better and stronger relationship. It's understanding that they are going to be different than you. It's understanding that how I respond to them is very important. The first thing that we do when we are hurt, we lash out. And we get mad. We want to be heard. And we want to be right. And we want to make sure they are wrong. And what we have to do is we have to understand that relationships are going to be hurtful. But how we handle those relationships, we need to not lash out in anger with anxiety. What we must do is communicate kindness. Understanding grace and grace and grace and grace. Because people... I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and thinks, you know what, I'm just going to make somebody mad today. Well, maybe a few of you do that. but uh, Most people don't wake up and think, you know, I'm just going to chap somebody off today. Most times it just happens and things take place. This is such a simple yet overlooked ingredient to a rock-solid relationship, especially with a relationship that is in need of repair. Kindness. Kindness. 
when you look at somebody with love, with respect and honor, you look at them and say, you know what? I pity you, but I love you. Instead of getting mad at them, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, it's in your bulletin, it says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. But one of the first things we have to do is be kind. That's hard to do, isn't it? When somebody hurts you, when somebody breaks up with you, when somebody sins against you, when somebody steals from you, when somebody hurts you, somebody takes your promotion at work, sometimes it's very difficult to be kind. But we have to understand that we are not our own. We are aliens to this world and what we are needing to do is be a light in this dark world. Being kind doesn't mean you have to agree with the other person. You can disagree kindly. Being kind can have difficult times sometimes. But it repairs relationships because it's what God wants us to do. And it's hard sometimes to agree with a lot of different people. And sometimes people are wrong in what they say or what they do. And you don't have to agree with them. But we have to be kind to them. And when we're kind to them, God can work that out. In Micah chapter 6 it says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So if we can do that, first thing we have to do is we have to be kind. We have to wake up in the morning to think, you know what, this world's goofed up. And I am, I messed up a lot. Have anybody uh, ran a red light? Anybody ever done that? Somebody honking the horn at you? I do that a lot. But uh, Joe was with me last week and I ran a red light. He goes, what are you doing? Um, you know, the other person, they honk the horn at you and you, you feel like a kind of like an idiot because you didn't see the red light. But then somebody does that to you. What do you do? You honk the horn at them. Everybody's going to make mistakes. Everybody's going to run a red light in life. Everybody's going to cause some problems. But instead of getting upset, we can be kind to them and not necessarily be upset with them. The second thing is relationships are repaired through honest and open communication. This is where the rubber hits the road, isn't it? Open and honest. Open and honest. Ever had a situation in relationships that causes relationships that need to be repaired? Something happens, a situation arises, someone hurts you in some way that crosses a boundary of acceptable behavior in the territory of a bad behavior. Ever have someone mad at you and had no idea why? They sulk and round and act and reserved and quiet. They ignore you and they pout. And you have no idea what's wrong. The person that can fix the problem was you. And you have no idea there's a problem because somebody will not communicate to you. There's no difference between somebody that sulks and sours and is quiet than somebody that's loud, obnoxious, and yelling all the time. What we have to do is have open and honest communication. That means we have to practice our communication skills. That means we have to be able to talk openly and honestly about every situation. So often we try to hide so many things in our life that, that uh, there's no open and honest communication. What happens in marriages and friendships all the time, it happens so on the job and at the church, is people just do not want to talk. They don't want to have that open and honest relationship because most people are non-confrontational. Most people do not want to have a fight. So what they do is they'll just sit and sour and they'll sit and sulk instead of open up and talk. But the only way that you can have a decent marriage relationship, teenage relationship, job relationship, and church relationship is if there's an issue, we sit down and say, we need to talk. Now, it, it, it's difficult, but it's very easy if you, would, if you would follow my example. When you have to talk, you don't have to talk to be won. You don't have to win. You have to talk to be heard. If you have to win every argument that you're in, you're not going to be happy. Just because you have an opinion on something and somebody else has an opinion on something doesn't mean your opinion is always right by any means. It means when we have open and honest communication, we have to come up with a solution. So what we do is, can we talk? Can we communicate about this? This is how I feel about this. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just telling you this is how I feel. And when we have open and honest communication, we become vulnerable 
to that person. And with vulnerability allows open and honest communication. Open and honest communication. Now communication is not me telling you how I feel. You shut up. I'll tell you for the next 30 minutes what I think I, what you need to do. That is not communication. Somebody give me an amen to that. Amen to that is you talk, I listen. I talk, you listen. We communicate about how we feel without getting mad, without being frustrated. And sometimes in relationships, we have to have a broken relationship before we can understand what open and honest communication is all about. Because until we're broken... And Al and I were talking about this this week. You know, there's a phrase that I use a lot. Uh, We throw broken things away. Throw TV away or bicycles away that's broken because we buy these cheap Walmart bicycles and you can't fix them. So something happens, we just throw them away and buy another $99 bicycle. But here's what God does. He doesn't use anything first until it is broken. And when it's broken, then we can say, you know what, this relationship is important. How I communicate and what I do is very, very important. When communication breaks down, relationships stagnates. Relationships won't be repaired through silence, nor will it be restored through anger. It has to be through kindness and through open and honest communication. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, it says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and you alone. If he hears you, have gained your brother. Here's, you know, uh, you and you alone. Uh, it's also called gossip. We, if somebody has a problem, let's just talk to the person with the problem. Because once we start the gossip sessions, then it goes domino in effect. Okay? So let's go on Facebook for a second. Any gossip on Facebook? All over the place, right? What we need to do is understand that uh, we can call somebody out privately, but we don't need to call somebody out publicly. As a brother and sister in Christ, we should stand up for what the Bible says and what we should do, but we don't need to embarrass somebody. Just because they said something or you said something on Facebook to, to hurt their feelings or hurt your feelings, it doesn't mean that we have the right to hurt them and to call them out. If you feel you've been wronged, Jesus said, it's your responsibility to talk and take the, re- take the action that you need to do. You need to take the action. If you've been wronged, You have to take the humble attitude and say, we need to talk. Not I have to win, but we need to talk. Um, Last week, we had Jim Patton's memorial service here. And this week, we have David Stroth's memorial service here. And uh, with both families, I have said this at the end of their, their family's life. I said, do everything you can with no regrets. Do everything that you need to do. So when he passes away, there's no regrets. Only if I'd have done this. Only if I'd have talked to him longer. Only if I'd have been down earlier to see him. Only if I'd have done this. With David's family and Jim's family, I would say they said no regrets. They did everything they needed to do. And that's somebody passing. And that relationship has been severed on this earth, but that relationship will have a reunion in heaven. But how much more important is no regrets to our relationships that we have at our homes, at work, at school, and at the church? No regrets. That means I have to go maybe humble myself and to talk to somebody that maybe I don't really want to talk to, but I know that I need to. No regrets is a very, very big topic. And then relationships are repaired by establishing boundaries. Boundaries. Sometimes boundaries are very good. We call them guardrails, if you would, driving on the highway. Uh, guardrails so you don't go off the cliff. But boundaries in life are very important. Once you decide to repair a relationship with kindness, and after you've established open and honest communication, establish the boundaries in your relationship. Relationships have to, be bound, have to have boundaries because we have to show respect to the other person. Whatever has been broken, we have to be repaired. When you have no trust, you have no relationship. Somebody give me an amen. When trust is broken, there is no relationship. And the only way that you can gain trust back is to set boundaries and live within those boundaries. So down the road, whether it's a month or two months or five months or a year or two years, those boundaries say, you know what? I can trust you. I know that we have had broken relationships in the past, 
but I can trust you in this relationship because we have set boundaries. So let me give you two things. First, we're willing to give as well as we take. When somebody is in a fault, when somebody has sinned against you, and you want to set all those boundaries against that person, okay, and you have the right to do that, but setting boundaries against a person without setting boundaries with both people, then those boundaries will easily be broken because it becomes a bondage instead of something that is easy to do. So when you set boundaries, give and take. Here's what we will not do. This is what we have to do. This is where we are going to go. This is what we have to say. When we do the we's instead of the you's, the relationships can be restored. But if you get upset, and you get mad and you stick your finger in your face and say, this is what you have to do and you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. It's the same thing as saying it's either my way or the highway. And folks, in our society today, you know what people take? They take the highway. Because it's hard. Because they feel like they're doing everything on their own. But we have to say this is what we want. If we are going to make this relationship work, whether it's a teenager or whether it's a high school student or whether it's at the job or at your church, it is a we mindset. Relationships is a two-way street. And it's hard, but we have to be willing to give as well as we take. And then secondly, we, we be willing to do right um, when you've been done wrong. You have to do what's right, even though somebody that you love has done you wrong. It's, it's never to do, wrong, to do right. It's never right to do wrong, even when you have been wronged. What we have to do is we have to always do the right thing. How do we know what the right thing is? Well, let me hit the rubber where the road is real quick. That's where we need to have the biblical guidance within our life. That's when we need to have people around us that we can cry with, and talk to, and pray with. Because ultimately, when you have been wronged, it cuts to the core of your life. It cuts, and it hurts, and it's deep, and the wounds are real, and you really don't know what tomorrow has in store. Either you're going to set, sour, and soak, and give up, or you can come alongside somebody and say, what do we need to do? I need to do what's right. I need to restore that relationship. And I know the first reaction is anger. I know the first reaction is to get even. I know the first reaction that we try to do is, is try to stay back and try to put some walls up. And, and I don't want you to hurt me again because when you hurt me, it just, it absolutely tears me up. So what happens in, in a relationship is, whether it's a teenage relationship or whether it's a marriage relationship... You're, you're in this relationship and, and you start loving somebody and you, you open up your heart and you hand somebody your heart. and Say, I love you and here's my heart. And they take care of that heart for a while. But all of a sudden, sin has happened and the, that heart that, that you gave to them, all, all precious and whole, they start throwing it on the ground and stomping on it and kicking it and throwing it in the dirt. And all of a sudden, they don't like you anymore and they try to hand you their heart back. And you look at your heart, and it's filthy, broken. And you put that back into your chest, and you say, I'll never allow somebody else to touch my heart again. I'm mad. I didn't trust them. They hurt me to the core. You put that heart back into your chest, and you go back into your hibernation, if you would. And you say, I don't trust men, or I don't trust women, or I don't trust boys, I don't trust the church. Because they hurt my heart. And all of a sudden, maybe five, six, seven years down the road, somebody or something takes place and that your heart has been healed within your chest. And you have to make a decision. Am I going to be the one that keeps the animosity and the hurt feelings in my own life? Or am I going to trust again? Am I going to open up my heart and I have to have open and honest communication and say, you know what? I've been hurt. And it stinks getting hurt. But I'm going to trust you again. Or I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to give you my heart. And sometimes it's very difficult to pull that heart out for the second or third time after it's been hurt and devastated. But that's what God wants us to do. We are emotional, relational beings. And what we have to do is we have to do what's right even though we've done wrong. Mutual respect is part of the bedrock of a good relationship. But you can't force it. It has to be a diplomatic action. It has to be something that we understand what we have to do. Mutual 
respect. Um, mutual honor. In Andy Stanley's A Marriage on the Rock um, video series that we use for premarital counseling, says this mutual uh, understanding, mutual respect is this. I respect you and your opinion just as much as I respect me and my opinion. Just because I want to do something doesn't mean it's what we have to do. Just because you want to do something doesn't mean that's what we have to do. What we have to do is we have to say, what do we want to do? And if we love each other and we care for each other, let us come up with the right solution and honor God in every area of our life. See, broken relationships are all around us. You have broken relationships in your home. You may have a brother and sister or you may have a mom or dad that have a broken relationship. You may have a marriage that's fallen apart. And that relationship is broken. And you can sit and say, you know what, I can deal with this for a couple more years. And you're going to go through this life and that relationship will never be fixed. If you put these three simple principles into place. Instead of getting mad, think with kindness. Think about what I can do to honor instead of just to tear apart. When we honor one another with kindness, what happens is God does great things within our life. And the second thing is um, honest and open communication. If our relationship is falling apart and all we're doing is fighting, all we're doing is arguing all the time, there's no open and honest communication. We need to call a timeout and say, what do we need to do? We need to sit down because we are emotional, relational beings and we have some relationship issues. Call time out and say, let's be open, let's be honest. Now, open is tough because when you're open, that means everything's on the table and you have to be honest. Just if somebody is in the midst of something, we need to be open and honest, but there's consequences to sin. But we need to be open and honest about everything that we do and everything that we say. And the last thing when we do this, it breaks that relationship, is establish boundaries. So this upcoming year, with your relationships, they're strained. Maybe you're dating somebody and they're not following after God and you have to decide what you're going to do. Or maybe it's your husband or your wife or maybe it's your coworker, or maybe it's even the church or maybe it's your family members. We have to understand there has to be boundaries. You have to love them unconditionally. You have to put God where he needs to be. But the thing that has to happen is you have to be humble before God and say, Lord, I need you to change me. I can't change them. I can't. All I can do is I can say, Lord, I need you to fix me. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for a second. I don't do this very often. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you have a broken relationship that is eating at you, would you just raise your hand? See, there's all kinds of broken relationships. There's all kinds of broken relationships within families, within homes, at school, and at church that we need God to fix that relationship. So I'm going to ask Justin to make his way up here. And we are going to sing a song. And I use this phrase. Before you talk to them about God, talk to God about them. If you have a broken relationship, if you have a hurt, painful relationship, you need to ask God to work within your life. Because you can't change them until first God changes you. And you have to be kind and gracious and loving and you have to look for ways to have him work within your life.